Welcome to the Gyroplane Flying Podcast. Welcome to Gyroplane Flying, where we discuss everything gyros. This is Joe Cavelli, your program host and also president and owner at Air Command Gyroplanes and Skywheels Rotorblade Systems. We appreciate you listening to our podcast as the program gains in popularity and number of downloads. Last month's podcast was a total hit. We discussed with DAR Inspector Lisa Turner the top five mistakes small aircraft builders make. Be sure to check it out at our podcast website, gyroplaneflying.com. If you have a topic suggestion, please let me know by using the contact us email form at aircommand.com. On this podcast, we've shared a lot of information about Skywheel's rotor blade systems as we've worked very hard the past year and a half to bring them back into production following an 18-year hiatus. Skywheels is a fiberglass composite gyroplane rotor blade system with an outstanding record in safety and performance dating back to 1985. Air Command introduced Skywheels to the market back then and made the high inertia blade a favorite with gyroplane pilots. Our guest in this podcast is Beth Stanton. For a number of years, Beth has been the author of the Innovations in Aviation column for EAA's Sport Aviation magazine. She's been a pilot for 10 years and got her start in aerobatics competition. Recently, Jeff Downey, who is the Rotorcraft chairman at EAA's Air Venture event, shared with Beth one of the best gyroplane rotor blades ever made was coming back on the market, and he suggested she look into it for a possible article. My thanks to Jeff for the referral. Following a discussion with Beth and her subsequent interviews with members of our team, I'm pleased to share Skywheel's Rotor Blade Systems is the featured article in the May 2021 issue of EAA's Sport Aviation Magazine for the Innovations in Aviation column. Beth writes about current and emerging trends and technologies in aviation. So how does a 36-year-old Rotor Blade product find its way in an Innovation in Aviation article? Stay tuned to learn more and hear directly from column author Beth Stanton. We'll be right back. Air Command has recently updated its manufacturer-suggested 12-month condition inspection guide for all owners of its gyroplane rotorcraft models. According to the FAA, no person shall operate an experimental aircraft unless within the preceding 12 months it has had a condition inspection performed in accordance with the scope and detail of Appendix D of FAR Part 43. The inspection needs to be recorded in the aircraft maintenance records. Who can perform the inspection? A licensed AMP, an FAA approved repair station, or by the builder of the gyroplane provided they obtain a repairman's certificate. Download the Air Command 12 month inspection guide at our website, aircommand.com. You can easily find the document under the gyroplanes tab, then look for the webpage, bulletins, forms, and manuals. You'll find the guide under the forms heading. You can also email us at connect at aircommand.com and we'll gladly email you the 13-page document. Remember, a gyroplane is only as safe as the pilots who fly them, and that begins with regular inspections and proper maintenance. You're listening to the Gyroplane Flying Podcast. And now, back to the program. Welcome to Gyroplane Flying. This is Joe Cavelli. On the phone with me is Beth Stanton. Beth is the writer of the recently published article on Skywheels that appeared in the May 2021 issue, EAA Sport Aviation Magazine. Beth, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm great. Glad to be with you, Joe. Thank you so much for the article that you wrote about Skywheels. And we wanted to highlight the article, of course, and offer it through our podcast, Bring It to Life. I wanted to ask you a few different questions about this, and I'm sure there were some things that were not included just because of space limitations. You write a lot about innovation in aviation. What did you discover in your research about Skywheels that was interesting or maybe something that you didn't expect? What was really interesting for me with this story, you know, in general aviation, rotorcraft is a niche of GA, and kit rotorcraft is a niche of a niche. And gyroplanes are a niche of that niche. And so to find out, and I will have to blame Jeff Downey 
Now, for those of you who don't know, Jeff Downey is the Rotorcraft Chairman for EAA um, at AirVenture. And I've written a few Rotorcraft articles in the past, and Jeff brought Skywheels to my attention. And so when I started to do a little research on Skywheels, I was thinking, here is this product, which is a rotor blade for a kit gyroplane. And it is being manufactured to such incredible quality and precision and the passion of all of the people involved from you, Joe, is the president of Sky Wheels, and to Kayla and Bill, who are the co-founders of Black Hawk Composite, who are manufacturing the rotor blades. Uh, I was just really blown away by the attention to detail and passion for just this one part of this kit. Um, granted, it's a very important part, <laughs> but um, it's just, it was really, that was really special to me. What were some of the things that you learned that didn't make it into the article? Well, you know, it's really interesting, Joe. When I do an interview, you know, and I'm listening to people talk, people will say things. They'll say a sentence. And I'm like, okay, that's going to be the title or that's going to be the introductory. So some things just like pop out of people's mouths that really strike me. And one of the things that Bill said Bill was involved with the spin-up testing of the rotor blades, which he was describing the original test stand where you actually, it's like this metal test stand with the rotor blade on the top and you sit underneath the rotor blade. He could kind of like feel it in the seat of his pants. And, and then he made some comment about, yeah, I could tell what the blade was doing. Uh, we would joke around by having my butt calibrated. <laughs> and so that really struck me as quite funny because, you know, people will say very funny things, not even realizing they're being funny. Aviation has a lot of characters in it. And, you know, the characters come out when I start talking to them. I know you spoke with uh, not only Bill and Kayla and myself, but also Greg Bradley, who was one of our test pilots, and Jim McCutcheon, who was the founder of Skywheel. Yes, Jim Lazay as well, who was the second owner of Skywheel. So, yeah, I think for this, you know, 1,200-word article, I think I talked to at least 50 people, uh, something like that. It seemed <laughs> – but it was – I'm joking. I, but it was wonderful to get such a depth of different perspectives. And, and I really do appreciate that when I write a story because everyone's coming at it from their own perspective. You know, like you is the new owner of Skywheels and Kayla and Bill is the, you know, manufacturing side. And then talking to Jim and Jim as the, you know, previous owners. And then um, Greg is the test pilot. It really gave me a very well-rounded view of, of the whole program and the, and the history of Skywheels, which is, you know, quite amazing. I mean, it spans 40 years. Reading the article, one thing that I noticed, and it was really interesting, is how you wove in the word back in all of your subheads for each of the sections. I thought that was very innovative. Oh, well, well thank you. And I, I will be honest with you, Joe. I don't know how I come up with things sometimes. It just kind of happens. I think um, to sort of flash back to Jim McCutcheon to sort of the original start of Skywheels. And so I thought, oh, back in the day. You know, I everything is fluid. I just play around. When I'm writing, it's kind of like when I'm writing a story, it's like driving in the dark and your headlights only see like 50 feet in front of you. Like you don't know where you're going until you get that 50 feet and then you see the next 50 feet. And it's kind of like that when, when I write an article. So when I said back in the day, I'm like, okay, back in the day, I talked about like when Jim first founded Skywheels. And then I looked back and, you know, the rotor blades were in production and they went out of production and then they're back again. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll put this part out and back. And so then I saw that those two had the word back in them. See, I don't think of this ahead of time, Joe. It just happens. So then it was like a personal challenge. I'm like, okay, let me see if I can make every subtitle have the word back in it so it was kind of a challenge and you know sometimes when I do this stuff it it can maybe I'm stretching stretching it a little bit and it can kind of get a little cheesy but I don't know I kind of liked it and I'm glad that you liked it too <laughs> I noticed it right away and I thought wow that's a great way to weave it all together it kind of made come together and like you said there was a break in at one point in time in manufacturing these but it really really tied it uh, nicely together I know you write a lot about aviation innovation. Beth, of course, has an article every month in the EAA Sport Aviation Magazine. If you don't get it, contact EAA, sign up, join the EAA as a member, get the magazine every month. It's a great resource, a lot of great articles. And uh, Beth is in there every month 
So you write a lot about aviation topics. What are some recent topics that you've written about? So some recent topics just uh, in the March issue was an article about beta technologies, and they are one of the forefront in eVTOL or electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Beta and Joby Aviation are actually involved with the U.S. Air Force's Agility Prime Initiative, which is sort of an accelerator program to get these eVTOLs to market. So that was really interesting, talking to them. Um, Recently talked to some folks at NASA about their Advanced Aerial Mobility National Campaign. Again, this is a program, it's a decade-long program that NASA is having. It's a campaign to sort of see how we can integrate all of these new players um, in aviation that are coming online. You know, you have um, another month previous to that, I did a, an article on Google Wing, which is a drone delivery service. So you have all of these new players coming into the market. And, you know, drones right now, they operate unmanned traffic management systems, digital systems um, below 400 feet. And then, you know, you're going to have this advanced aerial mobility coming online in the next years and decades. And then, of course, we have our general aviation traffic and commercial traffic. So I just kind of try to write about different things that are happening. I've written about some different propulsion systems. I really try to mix it up because there is so much happening in innovation, and it's such a broad topic. If you asked 10 people, how would you define innovation in aviation, you'd get a very wide spectrum. So I really do, do try to cover a little bit of everything. So it was fun to focus in on gyroplanes and then, like, a, a very important part of a gyroplane and kind of dig into the the rotor blade so different than you know talking about nasa's airspace urban air mobility airspace integration so it's it's fun to cover a very wide variety of topics and i'm sure that's what's interesting about how you approach your articles too do you see uh, beth a trend developing based on what you see happening i know you well, mentioned I... edtol but w- what are some of the trends that you see happening in the world of aviation you know, I'd have to say one of the biggest trends that is driving the trend we just discussed is electric propulsion. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about leaded aviation fuel and trying to get the lead out of that and, you know, clean, environmentally friendly fuels. And really the advances in electric propulsion, battery technology, and hybrid electric technology just in the last couple of years is really just kind of ramping up there's a whole bunch of people in this you know boeing and airbus and then tons of startups that are really closely exploring electric propulsion so i really do think that that to me seems to be the the biggest trend now how that's going to translate into general aviation you know again i think things trickle down into general aviation you know if you think about like avionics right now you know you have you know, glass panels and you have Garmin and you have all of this. And then it kind of trickles down into more experimental avionics where you can have affordable, you know, glass panels. I just think it's a really exciting time right now in general aviation. And again, it's not like tomorrow we're all going to have electric motors on our airplanes. This new technology of motors and controllers and clean energy is going to trickle down to GA in some really exciting and some really unexpected ways. And that's what's exciting about it. It's all driven by technology. It has been for years. We just think of 100 years ago when Orville and Wilbur Wright took that first flight. Just imagine what they felt and how things transitioned from there. And so it's just a continuum. Beth, is there anything else that you'd like to add? I know there's probably things that we could talk about for a long, long time, but is there anything that comes to mind as we look to wrap up our podcast? When I'm writing an article, it's, it's a span of you know several weeks to a month from the time I reach out and start doing research and interviewing and sort of talking to people. I have to say, one of the things that struck me the most in in putting together this story was I am glad that there are people like you and Kayla and Bill and Jim and Jim and Greg. I'm just glad there's people like you in the world, people that are just so passionate about their particular interests. You know, we all have our, you know, things that really light us up and turn us on. And just the fact that you approach 
this incredible, you know, manufacturing facility that makes stuff for the big players, you know, like aerospace players, and that they were willing to take on an experimental kit. That was such a leap of faith for them. It was a leap of faith for you to approach them. So I just really am glad that there are people doing really high quality, amazing things in the world. It just um, it just makes me want to come over and check out check out the facilities, check out um, Air Command. You know, your excitement got me excited. Oh, that's great, Beth. Thank you very much for sharing that. It's really been a team effort with Blackhawk Aerospace Composites, as well as many other folks that are involved in this whole effort with us. And it's great to have the rotor blades back on the market after an 18-year hiatus. Gyroplanes from Air Command to follow very shortly. In your work and writing your article, it was great to have it come to life here through our discussion today. And I really appreciate your time and look forward to working with you again in the future. I do too, Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Gyroplane Flying, where we discuss everything gyroplanes. The podcast is produced by Air Command International LLC and Skywells LLC. Even though both companies are represented in the program, they are separate and distinct entities. Please share comments and suggested topics with us using the Contact Us webpage at aircommand.com. You can listen to all previous podcasts at gyroplaneflying.com.